This is not a practical video, but if you take stuff apart just to understand how it works, if you're a curious person, you might be really interested in how autofocus works. And it's also gonna help you understand some of the key differences between modern cameras and answer questions like, why did we find the newest Canon and Nikon mirrorless cameras couldn't match the focusing performance of their DSLR counterparts. But first I wanna thank our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in things like business design and of course photography. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Whether you wanna fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place for you to learn and grow. Here's an example. Chelsea and I got to start in stock photography and people always ask us to make a tutorial about it, but we haven't yet done it. But you know what? Skillshare has a tutorial that's about 35 minutes long that you can get free with your membership. It's taught by Thea Merrill and it will teach you how to actually make money by taking stock photos. We use stock photography to make thousands and get our pictures published on books, magazines, and many other places. Skillshare is super affordable at less than $10 a month. So why don't you join the more than 7 million creators? Use the link in our description. The first 500 of you will get a free trial that'll allow you to actually watch that course for free. Let's get into focusing with a little bit of the history of it. It wasn't until 1978 when Leica introduced the first SLR that had autofocus. But you know what? It never took off. They never actually sold it to anybody because Leica decided our photographers don't really need autofocus and kind of that classic Leica attitude, right? It wasn't until 1985 when the Minolta Maxim 7000 launched and got widespread popularity that autofocus really came to the masses. The Minolta 7000. It's the world's first SLR with built-in autofocus. Fast. Accurate. 34 years later, autofocus is still a big deal. People sell their entire system to switch to another camera system just to get slightly better autofocus. So let's dig into the details of it. There are three main types of autofocus. Laser autofocus, contrast-based autofocus, and phase detect autofocus. Laser autofocus, you probably don't know that one because it's only built into some smartphones, but I think it might be an emerging technology. It works a little bit like sonar. They broadcast out invisible lasers and then measure the time it takes to bounce off the subject. That allows them to the, determine the distance to the subject and bam, they're able to get it in focus. It works great because you can use it in absolutely zero light. The second type of autofocus is contrast-based autofocus. Contrast-based autofocus works exactly like you probably manually focus a lens. I'll demonstrate. Let me put this lens into manual focus. When you're out of focus like this, you'll turn the ring until you see yourself come into focus. And then just to be sure you got it, you'll have to go a little bit past and then you have to back up a little bit. And that's exactly what modern cameras do with contrast detect autofocus, except instead of vaguely looking for sharpness, they'll take a small part of the image and look for contrast, the difference between darks and whites. And when something's out of focus, of course, everything gets blurred together and that reduces the contrast in a way that's very easy for cameras to measure. The need to hunt past works okay for still subjects and still images, but you can imagine if something is moving, by the time you got it in focus and you were happy with it, that subject would have moved and would already be back out of focus. So it doesn't work great at tracking moving subjects. Still, through the power of super smart software, a lot of modern mirrorless cameras that use contrast detect autofocus are doing a pretty good job of tracking moving subjects, for still photos anyway. The big problem is when you get into video autofocusing like this, they have to continuously hunt in and out in order to make sure that the current subject is in focus. You'll notice that especially in the out of focus background, little bits of bokeh will be like getting bigger and smaller as it's hunting in and out. And that can drive people crazy. And this brings us to the third type of autofocus, the one that pretty much every modern high-end camera is going to be using, and that's phase detect autofocus, frequently called PDAF. Phase detect autofocus works a lot like your eyes in that it measures the distance by using two separate points and then kind of calculating the angle. If you've ever known somebody who only had one eye, they find depth perception to be quite a bit more difficult. That's because of a little bit of trigonometry. You have two eyes and thus they can draw a triangle to a subject. The law of signs would allow you to math the distance between your eyes and that subject. Here, I'll draw it for you. These are your two eyes and you're looking at a subject over here. We draw a line here to your eye 
we draw a line here to your eye. Any one of these eyes cannot calculate the distance from here to here. However, knowing the distance here, this angle and this angle, and with those two angles, of course, we can subtract from 180 and also know this angle. And those three angles are all the information we need along with this distance here to calculate the distance of either one of these lines. And of course, if we know those distances, we could use the Pythagorean theorem to divide this and calculate the actual distance to the subject. So how do you do this with an SLR, which seems to only have one big eye, right? It gets a little complicated, but it's actually really cool. I'll take off this lens here. And as we look inside there, you can see the mirror. That mirror bounces the light from the lens up to the viewfinder here. So you can see through the lens what's going on. But there is a hidden second mirror that automatically retracts when the mirror goes up and you take a picture. That's pretty cool. And in fact, if you were to use an older SLR, like an old film SLR before they invented these phase detect autofocus systems and were using these semi-translucent mirrors, you would find the viewfinder was actually about a third or a full stop brighter because it is passing all of the light with a simple mirror up to your eye. So these DSLRs are actually hiding some of that valuable light from you as you're trying to look through the viewfinder, but it's going to good use. It is being bounced through a fairly complex array to get to an entirely separate sensor buried usually in the bottom of the camera, sometimes in the top of the camera that has entirely separate photo sites. This Canon illustration shows the light passing through the semi-translucent mirror to the secondary mirror, through the field lens, off a third mirror, through a secondary image forming lens that splits the light into two directional parts and finally onto the PDAF sensor. The PDAF sensor must be aligned precisely with the image sensor or the camera will misfocus something that micro adjustments are intended to correct. Let's take a look at just that AF sensor because that's where it really all happens. The simplest AF sensor has two one dimensional rows of pixels. Split the light so that the same portion of the frame from two different angles hits each of these sensors. If a subject is perfectly in focus, its light will hit the center of each one of the sensors. However, if the subject is too close, then that same point of light will hit towards the middle of each frame. If the subject is too far away, that same portion of light will hit on the outside of the frame. Thus, in the same way that having two eyes allows you to better estimate distance than if you only had one, this gives the camera the information it needs to know whether the lens is currently focused in front of or behind the subject. Not only that, but it knows just how far off it is. And that means that with one quick movement, the camera can snap the lens into focus. It's not a perfect system, but I'll talk about that in just one second. First, let's look at a real phase detect autofocus sensor. This is from the Canon 1DX Mark II, about a $6,000 camera with a very expensive array here. Now, right in the middle here, you see arrays that look much like what I was just describing. Long, one-dimensional, and they just about touch each other. These correspond perfectly to these autofocus points. And you know those focusing points on the outside? They're physically located on the outside of the sensor. If we look at this diagram, you'll notice that it says vertical focusing at f5.6 and f8. That's important because those are fairly high f-stop numbers, especially f8. That means that this camera with those specific autofocus points could focus at f8, and that's not true of all the autofocus points. Let's take a look at some of the horizontal autofocus points. You can see that there is a gap between them here. That gap is okay. In fact, having bigger focusing points further apart actually gives you a little bit more precision, allows it to focus a little bit faster. Let's take a look at an extreme example, the diagonal focusing points. Look how far apart these focusing points are from each other. And if we look at the description here, we'll see dual cross type focusing at f2.8. That means that those focusing points cannot be used to focus at f4, f5.6, or f8, like the focusing points that were closer together. But Canon advertises that they provide faster and more precise focusing when you are using fast lenses. That's because having them further apart gives you a steeper angle, giving you more precision when you're measuring the distance to a subject. Here's the thing, when I was showing you this diagram, these focusing points are fairly close together. Imagine that we had focusing points way out here. Now, the light coming through would be projected over to them, and the angle 
that we need to know here is much steeper. These focusing points do not have infinite precision. There are little photosites in them, just like there are on your sensor, and there's a finite number of them. Therefore, it's going to light up a certain number of these specific focusing points. So either it's gonna light up this focusing point or this focusing point, but it can't necessarily measure exactly to an infinite degree this angle. So it's going to be an estimate. It's going to be close enough most of the time. Early focusing systems advertised being within one third of the depth of field. So they were acknowledging this isn't going to give you perfect, precise focus. It's just going to be close enough. New focusing systems are better than that. But you know what? When we do our lab tests where I measure the sharpness of cameras and lenses, I have to use contrast detect autofocus because when I test it side by side with phase detect autofocus, it's almost always just a tiny bit sharper because it's a tiny bit better in focus because phase detect autofocus is not perfect because of that little bit of rounding error. But there are situations that can make it worse. By having the focusing points close together, it's going to be a little bit less precise. And if you had focusing points that were very small, that angle gets steeper and steeper as it approaches 90 degrees and thus it gets less and less precise. It's going to have to make multiple different measurements as it's focusing, which are going to slow things down. It also gets harder as you work with telephoto lenses where the subject is further away. Telephoto lenses also have shallower depth of field, so you'll actually notice if stuff isn't in focus. That's why high-end cameras with more powerful phase detect focusing systems are the ones you want for telephoto lenses. That's also kind of why the phase detect systems we'll talk about in just a second on mirrorless cameras often fail, especially with telephoto lenses. So where do you put those phase detect sensors if you can't bounce them onto a separate array? And the answer is you have to mix it into the camera sensor itself. And there are a couple of different ways to do that. Most sensor manufacturers actually remove some portion of the pixels and replace them with phase detect focusing sensors. Each sensor is specialized to only receive like the left half or the right half of the image, but that introduces its own set of complexities because now the sensor is just missing pixels. So what do you do with those pixels that should be grabbing color and light and instead they're just measuring the distance to the subject? You just have to just have to make stuff up, right? So you'll kind of interpolate. You'll say, oh, all the surrounding pixels are red. We'll just guess that this one would have been red too. But in some way that you probably won't ever notice, you're missing image data and lowering resolution. It can also lead to banding because those photosites are often in a row and they might catch the light a little bit different or they might not get processed perfectly and it's just not a perfect system. Canon's dual pixel autofocus system is a particularly cool example of this because every single pixel is also a phase detect sensor. When it's not taking a picture, it can split the light into two halves of each pixel and use that to measure the distance to the subject. But now your PDAF sensors are literally half the width of a pixel. What would you guess would happen? Hard time focusing with telephoto lenses especially, right? And yeah, when we tested the Canon EOS R, that's what we found. Focusing was unreliable, especially as you got more and more telephoto. If you found this interesting, you probably should check out Skillshare, our sponsor. Skillshare has over 25,000 videos for curious minds like yourself. They can teach you about photography, business design, or many other topics. The first 500 people to use the link in the description down below will get a free trial. So hurry up and check it out. Thanks, Skillshare. For more nerdy videos like this, click subscribe, click like. If you have follow-up questions or comments or your own thoughts, add a comment down below. And of course, it's not all just this nerdy stuff. Go to our channel, check out all of our practical tutorials on photography, how to use our cameras, or you know what, just browse the other nerdy stuff, I don't care. Bye.